What is up everybody, Tanner here with another video. Hope you're all having a great day. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about business partnerships within dropshipping. Recently, I've been getting a lot of messages of people telling me these specific situations that have been happening where they tried to have a business partner and then it didn't work out. And there's usually three consequences that have happened between all these messages that I've been getting. You know, good partnerships are always a great thing because you never know what's gonna happen and maybe you're not the best at everything. You know, I would never consider myself the best at every single part of e-commerce. So sometimes it's better to have a partner involved where they are good at a specific aspect that you aren't as good at and then when you team up together you can build this sort of dream business or do these things that you normally wouldn't be able to do by yourself and then in the long run that can lead to more success but that isn't always the case unfortunately so the three things that I want to talk about real quick that I've been seeing within these messages either a the person was in a partnership and the person had the other person the partner had all their information on the shop buy and stuff and then the person that was not the partner or the other partner did not get paid their part. So they made a bunch of sales and made profit or whatever and they didn't get paid their part. And B would be, it's the opposite way around where the partner that doesn't have all the information on the account um, did not pay their part of the cost. Let's say the store's not doing well but you still agreed to split the cost and then that person did not pay for their part of the cost. Or C, the person with all the information on their account, they started blowing up the store, you guys together did really well and started making a lot of profit and then they just ditched you completely and there was nothing you could do because your name wasn't on the Shopify account, you weren't on a staff account, etc. Whatever the case was, they just got completely kicked off and lost money and put all the effort in all this time and then got nothing out of it. So that's definitely a bummer and something that is probably not a good feeling at all. I've been through some bad partnerships within some minor businesses, but you know, over time I learned those lessons and I'm gonna be telling you guys how to deal with partnerships and how to make it actually come all together in the right way so nothing can happen to you. And if something does happen, you can go after them legally. So I know a majority of my audience, I would say, are under 18 years old, um, you know, aspiring entrepreneurs. And most of the time as a new business owner or, you know, getting into a new business when you're under 18 you don't really understand all the legalities and all the logistics of everything so you really just sort of go in blindly and maybe you find someone someone dms you on instagram hey want to start a store together and maybe let's say they're 25 and they put their name on everything because you're not 18 and you start doing all the work and then they just throw you off after it starts making money so that can happen and you can't really do anything about it because there was no legal contract and you are under 18. So what I have to say about you guys that are under 18 is really just to use my examples as a learning lesson because I started a store before and started building it up and I was managing it. I sort of looked at the other person, the partner, as my boss. There was no legal binding contracts involved or anything like that. And then after I started making money, I was like, all right, here, can you pay me for this part of the sales? And nope, nothing ever came my way. Never talked to him ever again. So um, that happened, but then I learned from that. So right now what I wanna do is hop on my computer, show you guys some examples of partnerships that have done well and something that I found pretty interesting about Facebook so let's go ahead and hop on my computer and I will see you there okay so right here this is Facebook stock trading and their valuation combined um, so basically if you don't know already I'm sure all of you know if you're watching the YouTube video you know what Facebook is the largest social platform right now and uh, founded in 2004 by Mark Zuckerberg and several other people uh, but as you can see the stock right here is 480 billion dollars so that's how much Facebook is actually worth and this company wasn't started by just Mark Zuckerberg there was other partners involved because Mark wasn't the best at everything so you know something really interesting aside from the whole business partnership thing right now is that Amazon actually recently passed a trillion dollars of valuation you know how big Facebook is how much money they're worth that's only half of what Amazon is worth which is crazy to see how Amazon has blown up so much in the past five years um, so these are the Facebook founders right here, the original founders, Mark Zuckerberg, everybody knows Mark because he's still the CEO and sort of the face of the brand of Facebook behind everything. Um, you know, he really, he really just goes out, answers all the questions and he basically runs it all. But these are the other partners when Mark Zuckerberg was building Facebook out of his dorm in Harvard, these were the other people involved, Eduardo, Dustin, Andrew and Chris. So I did a little bit of research on all of them to sort of figure out what the deal was. Are they still involved in the company, etc. And I found some interesting information about Chris Hughes. So as you can see, Facebook was founded in 2004 and it really didn't become super huge for a little while. But Chris actually, he dropped out of Facebook. He sort of exited the company in 2007 to end up running a political campaign for Barack Obama when he was a senator. So I read this article right here, as you can see, he's the co-founder, he made $430 million off of Facebook, which is a ton of money, but if you look at how much Mark Zuckerberg is worth, like 60 million or something like that, that is 
minuscule compared to what Mark is worth and Mark is still the CEO of Facebook so he's continuing to run everything and this was a business partnership right here and he made 430 million dollars off of it so this article is pretty interesting Chris Hughes he was actually from near me Hickory North Carolina because I live in Greensboro North Carolina but I found it very interesting to see sort of you know what happened with Chris Hughes he was involved in the company he had a big stake in it just because these partners together mark he's a smart guy but i'm sure when they were building this company they really didn't know what they were doing and he wasn't the best at everything maybe he needed some help with development so we had these other partners and other students within his university harvard to come together and build this company but my guess is that mark zuckerberg sort of just stayed you know the head of the company and continued to run and lead everything but right here you see Mark Zuckerberg, he dropped out of Harvard to pursue Facebook, but Hughes, he actually graduated all the way through university, you know, even when Facebook was blowing up and making money. And then three years after uh, Facebook was actually created, 2007, right here, Chris Hughes left Facebook to work for Barack Obama's first presidential campaign. So Chris Hughes calls this company that they built Facebook a lucky break, as you can see right here in the title. And, um, you know, I find it very interesting how he sort of changed his mindset very quick. As the company started to blow up and all of his business partners were making money, he ended up leaving the company just because he wanted to be involved with more political campaigns. And after reading this article, he wants to be more involved. He said it's unfair to um, see that he can make billions of dollars within a few years and then college students have trouble paying back their loans. So he's involved. He wrote a book and all this stuff about um you know political stuff well i want to recommend to all of you guys that want to get a business partner for drop shipping there's several things that you have to look out for okay so one thing you need to look out for when finding a business partner let's say it's someone you're friends with in town you know that's a lot more trustworthy than someone that doesn't live near you uh so if it's someone that's overseas or across the country whatever it is then sometimes you have to really think things through you know one is it too good to be true if they're offering you something that seems very very good Let's say they have dropshipping stores that are making 50000 a month and you have a dropshipping store making $100 a month and they offer a partnership. You no, know, that doesn't really seem right. It seems too good to be true. Why would this person over here making 50000 a month team up and make you a business partner at $100 a month unless they're trying to mentor you or help you? You know, if they're trying to do it sort of as a stake and then maybe they're just trying to have you manage and run everything, fulfill the orders like a virtual assistant and then pay you very minimal or not at all. So be careful with this kind of stuff if it seems too good to be true. I would say for the most part, um, getting into drop shipping is something that I would recommend you try and do on your own because once you learn these skill sets of marketing, you can apply them to any online business when selling something. So just drop shipping overall, I wouldn't say it's a company or a business model that needs tons of employees and stuff like that unless it becomes a really large scale and then the company sustains on its own and you end up just having inventory on your own in a warehouse instead of drop shipping it because of logistics issues with suppliers but if you are going to get a partnership i'd recommend you know go online right here i just looked up partnership agreement and you choose a state whatever state you're in or if you're in another country then you'll have to figure that out on your own but Look at this. This is a partnership agreement. It's a legal binding contract between you guys if you two sign it. Um, and you can edit all of this. You know, how much capital are you putting into contribution to invest in the company? Um, all this different stuff. You know, some of these aren't really going to apply to a dropshipping business, but you know, still look through it and see sort of how it works, how each person is going to be paid and everything like that. So when you're doing this, if you're under 18, either you can sign as your company. Um, I'm not a lawyer, but I believe if you have an LLC or an incorporation, you can sign on behalf of that if you are a stakeholder. Um, or if you're under 18, have a legal guardian sign for you, and then the other person signs it. As you can see right here, you witness, and then the partner, so they sign that. Um, if this is overseas or across the country, it's something that has to be done online. It's really just a trustworthy thing that has to be done right and make sure that you're paying attention to everything. So when you're finding the right partner or just looking for a partner overall, you really just need to watch out for expertise versus effort. So those are two different things. You know, I could be really, really good at drop shipping, but maybe I partner with someone and I make them do all the work. So it really comes down to effort. Even if you don't know much about drop shipping and you don't make much money with it right now, if you put in the right amount of effort, then eventually that will lead to expertise, which will then lead to more success. But it seems like most people that attain you know a certain level of expertise within a certain business they sort of put away the effort they try and put it on to someone else to have them do it for them even if they have no idea what they're doing and when that comes down to it then it's sort of hurting their business and their reputation based upon look this person they're really good at this 
but they're not even doing any of it right now. They're not working on it. So when it comes down to this, guys, really, I would just say be careful. Make everything legal. Talk to an attorney if you have an attorney you can contact. You know, just to make it very basic and very legal. I would recommend if this is something that's going to be long term and you're going to make several stores together, or different businesses that are aside from drop shipping, then create an LLC together, make each other separate shareholders, and then create a partnership agreement. And all this stuff will be legal. And if something happens where they don't get paid and all this stuff, then you can go after them legally. You know, like I said, drop shipping is something that I personally don't have any partners, at least long term partners. You know, I have virtual assistants that help with stuff, but I don't have any actual partners that are ownership. I have agencies that may run my ads and I pay them a specific percentage of the sales, but it's nothing really serious that I would offer a large percentage of the company because you never know if these drop shipping stores are going to be a hit or a miss. So really comes down to effort, which leads to expertise, then leads to success. So guys, I would say go on your own, learn this stuff by yourself, and then eventually that will lead to your success. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, a little bit of information on business partnerships. If you enjoyed this video or learned something, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Peace.